Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the car AI. Back into our scene we've got our car spawns which we had before. We have a slight change to the car spawn script, it's just one extra line of code. So what we've got is inside of this area here after we've spawned our car target, our car target, we're going to have this car dot game object dot get component car target movement which is a script we're going to be adding in this tutorial. That one's dot car data holder equals our transform parent. So our parent being the one that's got the car data on it is going to it's going to need to be accessed by the car target that we've just made. So that's that. Um, if I hit play, you can have a check at how it works. So we've got our cars moving around. They've got a little trail renderer behind them as well, so you can see where they go. And what they are, these are cars themselves, the actual objects of the car. But they also have their own targets along with them. So if I find one there. So this car has its target in front of it and it's moving, that one moves at like 90 degree angles and then the car follows it smoothly and that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So if I go through and uh, first things first, they do everything based off of tags so what we're going to need to do is add tags to things. So our walls, just the walls not the actual wall parent need a tag of wall so you just need to add that here. Um, doesn't really matter how you write it or what you call them, as long as you call them something that is referenced later on when you actually do them in the scripts. Um, something else that needs to be tagged are these road junctions. What I've got are road junctions which are made up of four different waypoints, and each waypoint needs a tag of road waypoint. Now each junction goes inside the main road junctions like parent, which is just to make everything tidier inside the hierarchy. Um, but basically, it's got eight of them on this in this map. If you create your own, you can create your own, and you're going to be able to use each individual junction, each group of four like this, um, on each junction, as long as you're only using T giveaway junctions, just like exactly the same as this. So inside here, I've got a, uh, I've got four of the pretty much the same objects, but they're all facing different directions. So this one's facing into the road because this is going to be coming along this road here and then down into here if it decides to, it decides to turn. Um, this one's facing actually the same direction but in a different place so this one goes across and down. All of the positions and scales are available here. Um, one other thing you might want to do is uh, just copy the project or download the project which I'm going to put in the description of all of the videos So and each video has got their own project so you can get each project along the way or you can get the main project at the end and just get all the data from that one if you wanted. So I've got three of these and then the final one's got another one inside it because this is coming out of the junction and they need to decide if they're going to turn left from from this point they need to decide if they're going to turn left or right so they need to wait at the junction before they even hit that trigger so that's how that's set up and then these all got, they've all got the same script on them and then finally what I've done is created the car object and then we had the car target which has now also got a script onto it as well um, but the car object is here um, which I just made using a cube. It's actually the same object that I used to make the car spawn objects, but it's and it's exactly the same size. But it doesn't need to be, um, as long as you're not going to be, uh, as long as you've got a big enough trigger for the car spawns. So these objects are like this big, and then I've got uh, rigid bodies on there just so they can be hit by triggers. You could probably make them kinematic actually, but um, I'll leave that for now because I, I haven't tested it, I haven't checked it. So that's all they're going to need to be doing. And I've just made a prefab of that, and then you need to reference everything in the scripts, like I said earlier. Our scripts, we've got um, some extra ones here, and so we've got our car movement, our car target movement, and road waypoint script. So if I go into our scripts and I look at the road waypoint script first, so that's for each of the uh, ones of the groups of four, each, each of these is going to have this script on, and they're going to be doing slightly different things. So We've got booleans for each of them, which you need to set manually inside here. So say this one is entering right, so this one's called entrance right, and then it's going to set some more stuff inside the script. So we've got exit left, exit right, entrance right, entrance left, and they're all commented. Everything's commented on all the scripts I'm creating here, so you're going to be able to understand it, even if you don't want to watch the tutorial again, because you prefer reading than listening to my voice. Um, we've also got my junctions, which is the uh, junction that is our, actually our parent. So it's the, if I show you back into here, it's the road junction here, um, which doesn't actually have anything on it, but we need to access the transform of it so we can know which one it is. Um, and that's it later on. Then we've also got my child, which is only used for the, it's actually the exit left one, 
um, but the exit right tells the exit left what it needs to do. So inside start, we've got my junction equals transform parent, which is kind of self-explanatory. So it, it tells tells itself, it stores it for itself, so it doesn't have to access it every time that it needs it. It just accesses it first time because nothing moves here, so it doesn't need to know. Nothing else is changing. These are all just setting up the scene for themselves. Um, and then we've also got if exit right. So if we are an exit right, then we need to tell our parent, which is actually an exit left. Um, so transform parent get component uh, roadway point script, which is actually the script that we're on right now. Dot my child. So the child of the um, exit left is going to be the transform of the exit right, um, if that makes sense. So uh, if it doesn't make sense, please leave a comment. Um, I can explain stuff in more detail in comments, really. Uh, or if you want me to make another tutorial on something else, I will be making tutorials on how to add extra junctions and things like that in the future. So um, if you don't need to request those, I'm going to add them in anyway. So moving on, we've got our car movement, which is for the actual object of the car as opposed to the car, the object that the car is following. Now this one is only based on following the other object. This doesn't actually really move itself. It just keeps up with the other one. So what we've got is a to follow transform, which is set by the car target movement object. Um, which sets it the minute it creates it because this car is created by the um, target and then it tells it that. And then we've got a movement speed which is 0.04 which matches the scene quite nicely. Um, obviously it depends on the size of your scene but if you use the one that I'm using 0.04 is a nice speed for the cars to be moving at. Um, you could variate that if you wanted to, it's not going to make too much of a difference. So if you wanted to make it random you can um, but I've just decided to leave it as a fixed variable. And then we've also got, that is going to be matching the same as the one that our target is moving, just so we can stay at the same pace as it. And then we've got our rotation speed, which I've got set to 5, which is based on the size of the scene and everything, and the size of the object. So it can vary depending on if you've got a different size scene. And then we've also got a distance from the target, which is the distance we're going to be following away, to make sure that we're not just on top of the target at all times. So inside our function update, as long as we have a following object, it's going to be doing all of this stuff. And that this stuff is, it sets a position, which is the position which we are aiming towards, which is the distance between our two follow position and our own position. And then we've got our new rotation, which is going to be a quaternion look rotation, um, which is actually looking towards the position that we just decided would be the one that we're trying to aim for. Then we're going to set our transform rotation to a quaternion lerp, which is from our transform rotation to the new rotation based on time delta time multiplied by our rotation speed which we set up here and so basically that's going to choose a nice to make it to make it smooth between the point that we're at and the end point is going to choose a nice point and lerp towards it every time the update is called and then we've also got um, after that if we are too far away from our ob from our following object then we're going to be moving towards it so if we if our distance is if our vector 3 distance from our transform position to the following object's transform position is greater than the distance from target variable that we set here, then we're going to transform translate vector 3 forwards multiplied by our movement speed. Finally, we've got our uh, on trigger enter. So, as long as we, the minute we hit a wall, we're going to destroy our two follow object and we're also going to destroy ourselves. So, basically, when we, when we hit a wall, which is an, an invisible wall that we're leaving on, we're going to just destroy ourselves and our following object so we're completely removed from the scene. Okay, moving on to the car target movement. We've now got our car data holder, which is the what's going to be holding the data for the cars, um, which we set in the previous tutorial, and that's going to be set right at the start. We're going to we're going to know what that is, and that's going to be told to us. Like I said, in the spawn when we spawn the cars, it's going to set the car data holder to our parent here, so then it knows, so it can access it easily without having to kind of check against objects all the time. We've then got our car prefab, which is the main prefab for the car that we're going to be spawning. And then we've got my car, which is the actual car that we've spawned for ourselves. And then we've got a target waypoint, which is the waypoint on the road junctions. It's going to be the waypoint that we're actually trying to aim towards. We've then got a uh, previous junction, which is the last junction we were at. And what that does is it stops us from being able to do U-turns. Because say if we were coming out of this giveaway here and we decided to turn right, um, we could then hit this waypoint and decide to turn right again so we would just do a u-turn straight back in and we don't want to be doing that so we then got if we're driving as well so we've got driving as a boolean which is true to start with and then in traffic which is false to start with because it gets set during the game and then we've got our movement speed set to 0.04 the same as our car movement 
inside start, we set our car to the instantiated one. So we instantiate a car from car prefab, but transform position, transform rotation. And we set our car to that. We then got tell our car, which will have a car movement uh, script on, to, on it. We tell that one that the uh, to follow object is ourself so that we're making sure that they're going to follow me and then we have uh, an invoke repeating of check cars every 0.5 seconds on update we've got function update uh, if if we are driving and we don't have a waypoint then we're just going to be driving normally so we just transform translate vector 3 forwards multiplied by our move speed otherwise if we're driving and we do have a waypoint as long as we are greater than 0.1 units away from that waypoint based on the VEX3 distance, transform position, and then the target waypoint position. We're going to look at that waypoint, and we're going to move towards it at the same time, just to make sure that we're moving to where we want to be, as opposed to kind of going all over the place. Okay, so that's the update, and then we've got our triggers. So we've got a trigger for road waypoints, which is if we hit the tag of road waypoint, which we set earlier, if the other one's uh, road waypoint script isn't the junction that I was just at, so just to make sure that's for the U-turns again, so to make sure that we're not going to hit the same junction twice in one go. We want our target waypoint to then equal the other one, so we are now, we're targeting that waypoint temporarily, and then we set our previous junction to that junction because we definitely hit that, hit that one, that's not so temporary. And then if the target waypoint effectively if, if our if our waypoint if the waypoint that we just hit if their component of road, road waypoint script is ex exit left um, so basically if they if we are at a junction where we are we need to give way or we decided we're going to turn based on a chance in, from zero to five so it's actually a one in five one in four chance of turning as well if we're not at our give way then we're going to we're going to decide whether we're going to turn, so we need to know if we're going to enter. If we're going to enter, if we're going to turn left into a junction, it's all it's always safe to turn left into a junction. So we're just going to just going to turn no matter what. So we wait for a little bit just to make sure that we hit the target, and then we set our rotation to that. Because this is the object that the car is following, uh, this can just snap at 90 degrees like it's going to. So it turns 90 degrees, and then it just goes forwards by setting target waypoint to null. Back into update, we are. Uh, just going to move forwards because we're driving and our waypoint is set to null. We've got uh, otherwise basically if if we aren't entering left then we need to stop so we need to wait for a little bit just to make sure that we get to the junction properly and then we're going to set our driving to false so then we're going to check if there's that's how we that that then tells um, the check cars to make sure that there aren't any cars within a range around us and then otherwise if we decide that we're not going to turn and we're not at an exit left then we're just going to set our temporary target waypoint to null so we can just carry on driving as if nothing happened. And that all happens so quickly that it, you don't even stop moving, it just, it just carries on. Finally, if we hit into another car, so if the uh, object that we're following, that the actual car object is following, triggers on another car, then we set driving to false and we are in traffic. So we're going to wait. It's, it's, it leaves a good distance behind. Obviously, it depends on the distance that you set in your car movement for the following. It means that the cars are going to be a nice little distance behind each other, so they won't crash into each other. Moving on to uh, on trigger exit, we've got if the cars if we leave the trigger of the car, just and we also got just to make sure we've got it, so we're not going to hit our own car because then we just stop moving all the time. If we leave the trigger of the car that we were in a trigger with before, then we aren't in traffic anymore, and then we just double check that we don't have a target waypoint because if we do, then we're going to leave our driving to false. Otherwise, we're going to set our driving back to true as well, so we're just going to carry on driving because the car in front of us has moved away. And then inside our check cars, like I said previously, it's only going to be used if we aren't driving and we have a waypoint. Inside that, we then temporarily set driving to true, and then we create a for loop just to check against all of the cars, which is why we need the car data holder. So we check against all of the cars in the list of cars that are in the scene, and then for each of the cars, we check that they're not the same object that we are, we also check that they aren't null, because sometimes the cars, if they remove themselves, they're very, very... For a short amount of time, they are set to null, um, and we don't want to be checking against empty cars. And then we check our distance against that car, and if our uh, vector distance transform position, other transform position, is less than five, so if they're within uh, five units of us, then we decide we're not going to we're not going to go unless if there's certain parameters. So um, if they are driving, then we definitely aren't going to go because it's not safe and we need to not move. Otherwise, if the other car does have a target waypoint and their junction is the same as ours so basically if they are if they're on our junction and they are waiting at the junction as well and finally if their junction is entering right 
So if they are turning right into our junction, effectively we're, the only chance, the only time that that's going to happen is if we're entering, we're exiting the junction, and they are entering t and turning right into the junction. Um, we set our driving to false, and we let them go. So they'll carry on driving, and we'll stop. So after all of that, if our temporary driving is still set to uh, true, then we are going as long as we aren't in traffic. So our target waypoint shouldn't be null so we're just double checking every we we double check with that all the time and then we check that our initially we check that our target waypoint is entrance right and if it is then we set our rotation to that and we turn otherwise if we're exiting left we have a 50 50 chance to either exit left or we can continue on and then exit right uh, between a random range between zero and two we decide that we're going to um, exit left so we transform our rotation to the same as the exit left rotation and then we just drive so we set our target waypoint to null and we carry on driving otherwise uh, we set our target waypoint to the child of the uh, exit left waypoint and then turn we set we start turning right which is a function so we create a function called turn right and then we end all of that uh, check cars bit there and then our function for turning right if we again if we don't we just double check that we have a target waypoint which we should do because we set it just here um, if we have a target waypoint, then we wait for a little bit, which is 0.4 seconds for this. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you can check it just to make sure it suits with your game. And then finally, we set our rotation to that one's rotation, and we set our target waypoint to null, just like we have previously, just to make sure that we're going to turn when we want to turn. And then uh, and we're going we're gonna to drive away when we want to drive away. So that's pretty much that. So just to double check how stuff works. So this one's going to come along. It decided not to turn on either of those. And then it decided to turn on the turn right here. So it would have stopped and checked very quickly. If you saw it didn't move, um, it actually stopped and checked. And then it decided to turn because there wasn't any cars around. So I hope that's been useful. I hope that's not been too long-winded. If it, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in comments. Um, like I said, I've commented all of the scripts, so you should be able to read them through. Um, and if that makes any more sense to you, then I hope it does. Otherwise, do leave comments and I'll try and help you out. Um, and next time I will see you for the human AI tutorial.